Hi everyone, your chess puzzler here and welcome to the channel. It's back to basics today and I hope this is going to help many of you. I have covered some videos in cases where we have two lone bishops. Then I cover the case where we have two knights. And if they're enough to win a game, then I used an example to show if you can win a game when you have a bishop and knight. And now I want to cover one more case, a difficult one. And this is when we have a rook and a king, the knight and a king. And this is a question. Can you win an end game if you have a single rook against a knight? Some chess engines are quite bad at <laughs> dealing not with how to play the end game, but when it comes to evaluating the game. Top engines, but they have no problem with how to evaluate this ending. And let me bring up this ending. And let me bring up this random position where there is a check in progress. The question is, can black win here? Many players, including some relatively strong GMs, have tried this M1. So yes, it is possible and the only way to do this is to find a way to trap the knight. Once the knight goes, checkmating will be next. With what you see on the board, things are difficult for black to win. King c5, king e4, king c6. And if white plays this one right, black can never win. Try this in your own time. And if you find a way to win, then you know you made a wrong move somewhere. So if you play all the right moves, you cannot win. White cannot win because even if you find a way to fork and capture the rook, a single knight cannot force a checkmate. If you have two knights, then we have a different type of game going. Okay, let's rearrange. We have the black king here on a7. The white rook in the corner and this black knight on b3. The only difference with what you see on the board is I swap the colors around. If black is to play after knight d4 check and king c5, if you carry on with this knight check, once the king chases after him, another check. And after king b5, knight f3. If you deliver this check, once the king is forced to the last rank, not king b6, but king c5. Knight g5 chasing after the rook, and rook e7, not only saving the rook, but also protecting from any checks. And if you go for king c8, now king c6. And look at how fast you close in. King d8 avoiding mate, and attacking the rook, and this king responds to cover. If knight f3, or if any other move in fact, nothing really changes. Rook f7, king back to c8, unless you want to get checkmated. And this is where you can scoop up the knight, and the game ends soon. Okay, we started this end game from this position. and allow black to play first. What happens if you do this with white to move? With white to move, things are much easier. Rook d8 is the most important step. It stops the knight from coming in with a check and it stops the knight from moving anywhere, basically. If you jump the knight to the edge of the board, I'm not sure you'll go for any response like this. So let's go with this king move, a check, and if king c8 and now rook d3, forcing him to the corner, because if you place him on c1, this pin is all you need. There are many ways to do this. King c6, knight c2, and this key responds. And after this check, choose your pick. King b5 wins the knight, but I think there is a stronger move here in the way that it accelerates things. It's this king move here. If king b8, 
the knight falls again through this. But if you go for king d8, this is far worse. Rook b3 and knight here to stop the mate on b8 runs into this move. And this is where it all ends. Knight c7 is a mating one. And let's hear it without executing the last move. And this was it for today. A rook v knight is a draw. But this is only if you play out the best moves. And this is why many weak players and strong GMs still try it in the hope the opposition will skip. Once they do, or if they do, this is how you lose an otherwise strong endgame. A theoretical endgame, and this is a problem. Theory and practice are two entirely different concepts. It doesn't matter how strong your opponent is, one move out of place, and it's all she wrote. Practice this endgame, guys, and it will take you very far. Much more to come, of course. So until next time, everyone, this was your chess puzzle. Up.